environment uh, that is in some ways very different uh, from experiences in the United States. Now, going to Afghanistan uh, with this very uh, powerful and compelling vision uh, and the potential that Afghanistan has, Abby, uh, uh, what, what is your evaluation, your confidence? making progress to, to, to actually deliver <coughs> and implement uh, the steps necessary to, ach to achieve the, the very compelling vision that you have portrayed. Well, first of all, I think in terms of decision making, uh, you know, one, of the, uh, one of the approaches of the Yemeni government was to make sure that we work on the consensus, recognizing that it will come at the cost of speed. But I think that has really given us sort of evidence because we really see that the entire government seen it in all of the cabinet meetings, uh, committee uh, commission meetings, working very closely together and having uh, and uh, discussing their disagreements in a very in a very open fashion. I think in terms of the capacity and what I see, uh, you know, overall, if you look at it, you know, there's, uh, in all aspects of the government, there is uh, the, uh, the capacity is not really there. But even with that environment, there are islands of excellence. And what I'm counting on those islands of excellence and see how we can build on those. You know, I'll give you one example that I've worked with in some of the, also in the uh, Ministry of in Energy and Water. And I can tell you, in the last month and a half, we, I, get, I gave them a few you know, uh, you know, areas and challenges to see how we can get a few projects out. And I'll tell you about why I think it was, uh, we were able to make a compelling case. One of those ones is that, come on, calm down, this is a down, there's a come down, you know, of Western part of Afghanistan. And if you're able to build, uh, build that down, which will take about three years, we'll be able to uh, you know, start, uh, store 1.4 billion cubic meters of water over and above what is the Iran development. So that gives them that gives them enough of an attention that these engineers, without any overtime or anything, will be working 8 to 10 p.m. every night, including weekends. Similarly, there was another group that we wanted to get, you know, in terms of the Gulf for Peace program, 21 dams, uh, 21 small hydro dams uh, for irrigation purposes. They are completed. They will, uh, first of all, in construction, they will uh, employ about 34,000 uh, workers. And when they are completed, it will irrigate 140,000 uh, uh, hectares. And similarly, these groups worked that hard and now within a couple of weeks, uh, they're gonna start having these projects available for, uh, for uh, procurement by packages. And by the way, the third come up on that has already gone to procurement. Now we're hopeful that in the next uh, month and a half, we'll be able to issue a contract and by the spring the work will actually start. So, and that was just one example, I think, when I talk about, and of course in the Ministry of uh, Urban Planning, uh, whether it's uh, folks in the in, in Ministry of uh, uh, Public Works, uh, uh, you know, Ministry of, uh, or, uh, you know, Ministry of uh, uh, Communication, Information Technology, so on and so forth. Each and every one of them have these islands of excellence. And our hope is that we use that uh, analogy of the Zyosha plan to see how we can expand these islands of excellence and really with a hope that will become, uh, will become uh, in a part bigger and 